SCP-906, this thing, it's a mass of worms <laughs> that takes the form of a creature and naturally it's predatory. It's, it's an awesome, awesome, awesome animation, you guys. It's almost all tail and it kind of tells you more about it at the end, but this one was a really, really good story, guys. Make sure you subscribe to Dr. Bob, subscribe to me if you like reaction videos, and let's get into it. It all started with the roses dying. Only the one bush at first. I mean, the old die. man had come out to water his garden the same way he did every morning. That's me in 20 years. sad and brown, leaves drooping and water branches hardening. Just the one bush in the corner. But the next day, the bushes on either side of it had uh -oh. died too. Within a week, it was that whole corner of the garden. Pesticide? As the old man puts on his gardening gloves at the no. sink and stares out of the kitchen window, he knows that something is seriously <laughs> wrong with his poor plants. Definitely. The flourishing garden, so neatly maintained throughout all of his retirement years, his pride and joy, is now steadily dying before his very eyes. Works in the south. Living in a small <laughs> one-story house, there isn't much left for him to do. Out in Bushy, right on the edge of what could be considered London, there is very little going on with his day. Right. Inside the house, he hangs all of his photos yep. of the Lancaster bomber that he and his squad flew in the Second World War. Although those days are long behind him now, he chose to live here because on the hill that his house is on, he can see the planes taking off and landing from the nearby RAF base. You like that? And where does he like to sit and watch the planes? From his immaculate garden. I mean... The old man scowls at it. The perfectly trimmed hedges, blossoming trees, uniform grass, and times. colorful beds <laughs> are all being ruined by a dark stain steadily spreading from the back right corner. Starting with that rosebush in the corner and spreading out, everything in a rough circle measuring close to 15 feet is withering away and dying. Is it getting Not bigger on though? his watch. The kettle finishes boiling. He has to use his old gas hobs to heat up the water. The right. cooker is apparently long past its lifespan. The ignition stopped working years ago, so Makes he has to use tea, matches though. to start it. If he leaves on the gas by accident, well, there wouldn't be much of a kitchen yeah, left. Yeah, not good, man. That's he pours the water out into a mug and starts brewing his morning cup of tea. There you go. A few minutes later, the back door slides guy, open and the old man it. emerges, trowel and cup of tea in hand. <laughs> Years ready. ago, he would have marched purposefully across the grass, but now he is forced to plod instead. Right. His knees and back are both starting to give out from the years of tending to his precious green friends, mm -hmm. but the fire is still in his belly. Time will do that He too, reaches bro. the edge of the dead patch okay. and looks down. The lawn isn't just yellowing, it's fully brown. Oh. He pokes at the grass with his shoe, and it breaks apart to the touch. Yeah. How strange. That's not He's never dead. seen anything die off so suddenly and That's uniformly. Ash. <laughs> it isn't just a bad bed or an infection spreading around. It's a clear patch of death where nothing right. in the given area stands a chance. It's defiled. He steps onto the brown grass and walks to the corner where that first rosebush died. Be careful, The base buddy. of the fence is rotting away in that corner, giving him a peek into his neighbor's garden. The fence, too? With a good deal of groaning and aching, the old man lowers himself onto his hands and knees and peers under the fence. A pair of eyes meet his. Ah. The old man yells out in surprise. He checked The person on the other end screams. <laughs> After a moment, they look under again and start laughing. <laughs> It's just really? the mom from next door. She has we kids who like to play in the door. garden on their trampoline while he's working. They'll often talk over the fence to him between bounces. I hope I didn't like give you Wilson. a hot attack, she teases. He reassures <laughs> her that he's made of sterner stuff than that. Then they got to the matter at hand. What is going on in yeah. their gardens? What, She's having the same issue the too. Garden, that same circle is spreading out over her side too. Everything it touches is dying. Well then, has to be coming from this corner, the old man says. A pair of them pull the fence apart around the corner, creating right. a little hole between their gardens. It's short work. The boards break apart at the lightest touch. Before long, they have a little work site ready. There must be something down in this corner that's causing all of this. Right. Side by side, maybe. the old man and the mom from next door start to dig. The soil feels strange to dig through. There's Ugh. a kind of stickiness to like it, tar. as if there's a very faint layer of slime binding it together. Okay. Could it be a dead animal? That's the old yeah. man's best guess right now, but it doesn't it, seem very convincing. Surely right. that would nourish the soil with more nutrients. That's it might true offset too. the pH balance a bit, but not to the extent it would, of... It would smell crack. Too, yeah. The mom's trowel breaks. She Whoa. holds it up to her face, confused. The metal shovel scoop has broken. The tip of it has fallen off. Y'all better snapped, get off that half grass. Melted. I just bought this the other day. It's gonna rot your bones But the old skin. man isn't looking at the trowel anymore. Instead, he's staring into the hole that the pair of them have dug. Down there at the bottom, underneath the piece of Stop broken moving. metal, 
Something is moving. Nope. <laughs> he plants a gloved hand on Back either side of the, the hole hose. and leans down over it, peering at whatever worms? it is. Worms. Yeah. Tiny brown worms, each writhing and wrapping around the others, tying and untying knots. He straight now, my nephew is, like, deathly afraid of bugs, y'all, but he loves him some worms. He'll play with worms and dirt and mud like crazy but like in, a flying insect or anything anything that's crunchy nope he ain't gonna mess with it but worms he likes but worms i ain't gonna lie a couple of them in your hand like setting up fishing no problem a bed of them like that that's that's icky that's fear factor type ish straightens up with a groan takes his gloves off and pushes himself to his feet we need to call the council there's something yeah. dead down there that's rotten badly the woman from Hertzmere Council was clearly not very interested in sending a waste disposal team down when the old man <laughs> called her. She told him the they would stop by the is. bungalow in three to five working days and hung oh up. My God. Several calls later, she relented and agreed they would send a team across that afternoon. <laughs> Soon after like 4 p.m., a, a knock here. comes at the door. The old man escorts the waste disposal team around the side Go entrance, back. keen for them not oh, to traipse any mud to the head. house. Clearly annoyed look by this, it. the two workmen for the council trudge around the side and out into the garden, grumbling about how they have more important things to be getting oh on with. Oh my god, it's a The old man chooses to ignore them, <laughs> leading them to the back corner of his garden and pointing down into the hole he and his neighbor had dug just that morning. Only, the hole is empty. No more work. What are we looking at here? One of the workmen grunts. It's a good question. There's nothing at the bottom of the Bro, hole. No writhing worms, not even the shard of the trowel. Them. It's just an empty hole. The old man kneels back down by the hole and scoops back the dirt of it with his own trowel. What? Nothing. <laughs> the old man hears words muttered that he hasn't heard since the war as he escorts the two gentlemen back Whoa. to their van. <laughs> they slam the doors more heavily than necessary and drive off down the quiet suburban street, leaving the man standing confused on his doorstep. Yeah. <laughs> the next day, when he goes out to garden, the circle of death hasn't grown. It still looks bad. The plants inside it are clearly dead, but it hasn't spread any further than it was the previous day. So there was the old man there, sips his tea over the sink and stares out at the garden. It mm. must have been next door. That would be it. Before the council had shown up yesterday, the mom must have come outside and bagged up whatever dead thing was back there and thrown yeah. it out herself. Yeah. Good. He just hopes it doesn't stink up the bin. <laughs> now to do the sad part of the task and clear away all of his dead plants. Mm -hmm. Those rose bushes had been planted the year he moved in. His wife had oh, planted them. As he dons face. his gloves, the old man feels a wave of sadness wash over. But before he can experience it too deeply, he notices the holes. The tips of his gloves are gone, uh -huh. his fingers poking clean out. In lucky fact, it's not your looking fingers. down at his trousers, he notices a pair of holes on the knees of them it from where he'd been kneeling in the dirt yesterday. A knock at the front door makes huh? him jump. He goes out to see the mom from next door standing anxiously outside his place. Something She's happened. glancing up and down the street as she talks. She asks if he's seen either of her boys. He shakes his oh, head, no. hasn't seen them all day. He reassures her it's probably nothing. Back oh, in his no. day, boys used to go out of the house first thing in the morning and be back for dinner. Parents these days are too sensitive, too anxious. The look on her mm -hmm. face tells him that he isn't helping. She mutters something about having seen someone suspicious walking down the street, someone uh -oh. strange. Uh -huh. No use worrying about it for now. She heads off in the direction of the local park to go and look for her sons. <laughs> Sorry. The old man calls out to her as she leaves, thanking her for sorting out the dead animal from the end of the garden. She looks back at him confused. She hadn't touched it. I didn't do that. All the rest of the day, the old mm. man stands by his curtains, twitching them open every now and then to peer out and see if the boys are anywhere to be seen. Right. Keep He's watch. locked all of his doors and left the keys under his pillow. But sunset comes and goes. Nighttime creeps over the suburbs. No children in sight. Dang. He's just about to go to bed when he spots someone in the corner of the street just outside the glow from the streetlights, the figure look like lurks someone. over by the street sign. The person moves strangely, like taking rock. shaky footsteps and seeming to move slightly aimlessly around the pavement, avoiding the light. He opens the curtain wider and peers outside. His eyes definitely aren't what they used to be. He can't really make out who the person is at all. That's the, the safe thing to do is stay inside. A man of his age should make sure not to get involved. But the photo of him standing by his Lancaster on the wall tells him something different. The old man straightens up as best he can and walks over to the front door. He doesn't take a weapon with him. Oh. He won't need one. He will go over get. and talk to this gentleman, ask him what he's doing hanging around this neighborhood at night. Right. And if things go poorly, he'll walk back inside and promptly call the police. Yeah, there you go. The thrill of the confrontation excites him a little. Really? He missed this. As the cold night air blows against his face, kind of he feels his youthful out. energy returning to him once again. He calls out to the man on the corner. 
The shadowy figure stops hey. pacing and slowly <laughs> turns around to get a better look at him. Hey, you over there. The old man can tell even from this distance that the gentleman on the street is a good deal taller than him. Come on, but that shouldn't see. matter much. He'll go <laughs> over, have some stern words, and that'll be that. If this strange man knows anything, it'll be that he should respect his elders. We don't want your kind the old man the crosses loop. the road and stands under the streetlight, just a few feet away from the man. Shot, Frustratingly, his eyes Seriously. still can't quite make out the man's face. The old man clears his throat and rolls up his sleeves. Sir, this is a residential neighborhood with young children and an excellent relationship with local law enforcement. I would advise you to move along, or we'll be forced to call the authorities. <laughs> But the sound that greets the old man is enough to immediately do away with any of his bravado. Uh -huh. His blood runs cold as the figure in front of him starts to laugh. It is a gruff, rasping noise <laughs> with a slight squelching underneath it. Come to think of it, every little movement this figure makes, there's a little squelch. Not very the humorous. laugh stops suddenly, sharply. The figure turns the rest of the way around to face the old man head on. It takes a step forward. Light falls across it revealing a mass of wriggling, convulsing Ugh. worms. Millions of small brown worms all weaving in and out of one ground. another, dripping a thick and sticky liquid onto the street. The creature has no face, no features, no skin, nothing. It has the shape of a man, but that is where the resemblance ends. Gah. It is utterly inhuman, utterly terrifying. The old man almost topples backward in surprise, but steadies himself. A fall at his age would be very bad news indeed. Can you imagine, bro? The creature reaches out a writhing arm toward uh -uh. him. Liquid drips from it onto nah, the sidewalk. A small bait. puff of gas Motherfucker. comes up from it as the liquid <laughs> bubbles, burning a little dent into the stone. Never mind. So that's what was killing his roses. <laughs> the rock. Fast as he can, the old man turns and hurries Rod back to his fish. house. He doesn't want to turn around for risk of losing his balance. He'll get inside, lock the door, and call the police. <laughs> right. They will know precisely what to do. Wormy's that squelching rock sound is house, behind though. him, taking shaky, inhuman steps to follow him. Scared? The old man reaches the front door and slams it shut. He grabs the, the landline in the hallway and immediately dials 999, the British emergency number. Hello? Uh, police, please. There's a gentleman loitering outside my domicile. He appears Dome to be made side. of worms. Worms, yes. yes. No, no medication. <laughs> Just myself. Just There's a thud at the intruder. door, then a second thud. The old man drops uh -oh. the receiver and takes a few steps back. He's gonna rock no more door. thuds, no more noises. Maybe that was a slight overreaction. It comes the, the old man straightens tutorial. up and clears his throat. Uh -oh. Nothing to worry about. A sizzling sound fills the hallway. The door starts He's to look through the door. strange. Two patches are appearing on it, yep. the paint cracking and discoloring. Through through the, the patches start to bulge outwards, <laughs> and a drop of liquid seeps through. It falls on the welcome mat and burns a hole clean through it. The old man's there eyes widen. Worms. Just two Son, or three at first, then a few more, run. then a dozen more, burrow their way through the door, each Quit dripping with that and, and foul liquid. Off. The holes grow larger and larger until the creature has two large armholes burnt clear uh -huh. through the wood. The creature grips what remains of the door with its wormed fingers and wrenches the wood apart. It towers over the old man as it stands in yeah. the doorway, its surface crawling and wriggling as its feet burn holes into the carpet. The book hits the creature square in the chest, <laughs> knocking it off oh, balance. Fuck. The old man throws another book and another. He knew it was a good idea to keep his bookshelf out in the oh, hallway. He grabs God. another, but hesitates and puts See, it back. Candle Not the do first that. edition. <laughs> Instead, he heaves the old yellow pages in both of his hands oh, yeah. and launches it as hard as the he can pages. at the worm monster. That'll stop the, the book monster. smacks into its chest with enough force to break a chunk of it apart. Damn. The creature's chest bursts open, that, sending sucker. worms flying through the air. Something red falls out onto the carpet. A baseball cap. A child's baseball cap. The kid. Half digested. Oh. The old man gasps and puts a hand to his mouth. Oh. The worms splattered against the wall start to slide down towards the carpet, eating through the wallpaper as they go. You better run. Dude. Once on the ground, Seriously. they start to crawl and wriggle back over to their body. Reabsorbing He's into the mass from the feet. Yeah. The creature straightens up like nothing ever happened. He's going to need more than books. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> it's the mom no! from next door. Boo! The old Turn man's around. eyes widen further. I saw this your door was still open. I was just wondering if you've seen. The mom appears in the front doorway just behind the monster, takes one look up at it. Oh, I didn't and know freezes. you had company. Wait, she what? has a rusty <laughs> old zippo with a dim flame to light her way. What? The wormed mass turns round to her. In the same rasping voice that it laughed with earlier, it says one word, her name. Then it notices something and flinches slightly, the lighter in her hand. For a second, the old man, the mom from next door, and the Can giant worm monster all look at the tiny little flame. 
then it goes out. Oh. The creature lunges at her, grabbing her by the shoulders and wrenching oh, her no. into a ferocious hug. The smell of dissolving flesh fills the hallway oh. as she screams in agony. The old man does everything he can not to throw up. He needs so. to get out of the house. The back door, he'll go out the She's back while the creature eats. Absorbed. Step by step, he Rotted, creeps away from melted. the distracted monstrosity next to his coat rack, trying his best not to be heard. God, he slides dang. the kitchen door closed and puts a chair against the handle. It's not much, but it'll buy him a few seconds. You better go out the back door. He turns, rushing to the glass sliding doors at the back of the house yeah. and reaches for the key on the side. Only, it's gone. Of course, he left it's all the room. keys under his pillow. The pillow in the bedroom that's right next to... Break his the door slump. He turns back around and sees a crack of light under the Use kitchen door. A couple of worms are crawling their way under it, better gathering it together up. and starting to form on the tiles. They go you. That's it then. It's all over. Nothing left for it. The old man lets his eyes wander around the room. That creature is making its way into this kitchen no matter what he does. All he has are a few precious seconds until those worms are big enough to come after him. He wants to spend those seconds the right way. Feeling his ragged breathing starting to find a steadier rhythm, he walks over to that old picture on the wall. What? Him and his crew, all his best friends, standing young and proud in front of their bomber. Wow. He'd experienced this feeling before this moment. When you know that your demise is guaranteed, it removes some of the panic. The uncertainty of, Zim. will I make it? What can I do? Do I have a chance? It's a sickly thing. Like when you just it leaves you in the it. lurch, trying desperately to battle against your own nerves. Once it's decided, however, well, then everything becomes a lot clearer. He felt this way in the war, when their bomber was shot at while flying over occupied France. They were steadily losing altitude and airspeed as they crossed back over the channel. The seven of them had each taken a quiet moment to say their prayers and look out wow. at the stars flitting above them. Only, they hadn't died. In fact, they were all being wow. incredibly foolish. The solution was so simple that when the old man's rear gunner suggested they just drop all their remaining bombs onto the water to save weight, the group of them had all burst out laughing. One by one, the <laughs> bombs dropped silently into the sea. They're probably still down there to this day. Wow. No explosions. Explosions. The old man smiles. Yeah. Maybe it's not quite over after all. Burn it, sucker! He looks back at the ball of worms assembling on his kitchen floor. As more worms crawl under the door <gasps> the and join the mass, stone. it takes on different strange shapes. The First stone. a mouse, then a rabbit, a cat, dog. In a moment, it'll oh be the size of a God. hog. Rushing over to his gas stovetop, yeah. he twists all four of the dials all the way up. They whine and hiss at him, spewing acrid-smelling gas into the air. So, but it's Already take him his head too. starts to swim. He'll have to time this just right. Yeah, he's gonna take he him snatches the trowel and a box of matches up off the countertop and goes to the sliding glass door. This is it. Rasping laughter fills the room as the creature oh. stands to its full Maybe height, it's head out. almost brushing against the ceiling. You better the cut old man can feel himself something. losing consciousness from all the gas in the room. Bang. Bang! He slams the trowel against the glass door. Nothing. Break. Bang! Break. He does it again, still hopeless. The laughter grows louder as he hears squelching Get footsteps behind him. Bang! There this time go. there's a slight chip. Gotta he hits it again and again, go, go, trying go. his best to shatter it. But while the little chip grows into a crack, it's not working. You could do it, Grandpa. A warm, squishy mass <gasps> smothers oh, his no. shoulder. Worms burrow into his flesh, searing white-hot pain throughout his oh, body. That no. have to do. The old man strikes the match. Boom. Boom. Glass shatters. Flames bloom out of the house, licking the last remaining healthy flowers. Does Burning worms fly in all different directions, scattered across live? the lawn, the back fence, and beyond. Come on, the old ball. man thuds onto his back, looking up at the billowing smoke making its way up towards the stars as the scared worms burrow their way back into the ground. He would never understand the monster that attacked him that night. Thankfully, this is where I come in. There is something about fire that unlocks this primal fear in almost all living creatures. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on guys. So, that, first of all, that was an awesome story, bro. Um, all these storytelling elements with the music and the guitar and stuff, you know how it is. But, so seriously, I've been there before. That zen that comes over you, I almost drowned in a spillway before. Like, the current took me, and, um, and I, I had pretty much accepted I was going to die because there was no way I could escape it. I was like the, the undertow had, had had me. But my friends hoisted me out. But like in my head, I, 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 I felt a calm that I had never felt before. It's like I just accepted it and I was, I was pretty much saying my prayers. You know what I mean? It was cra it's crazy to know that that happens like that. But legit, this monster is crazy though. 
and SCP-906 is no different. Nicknamed the Scouring Hive, SCP-906 is the blanket designation for a super colony of worm-like invertebrates super that appear colony. to share a semi-advanced hive mind. The individual uh, okay. worms are dark brown in color like and appear to have some worms. level of shared intelligence. When separated from the colony, the worms will crawl towards its general direction but demonstrate a reduced level of problem-solving capabilities. However, wow. once they are back as part of the group, the scouring hive is a formidable predator. When too. hungry, this SCP <laughs> becomes acutely aggressive, secreting a viscous, highly corrosive acid that can eat through flesh, hair, bones, and clothing alarmingly quickly. Wow. Capable of adapting its form to mimic other animals and humans, this SCP seems to find a level of thrill in the chase. Able to parrot a very <laughs> rudimentary estimation of human speech, it can say names and even laugh, which wow. it often does while pursuing its prey. It is theorized that this ability to impersonate others is used to lure subjects into dangerous situations, like young children playing alone in their garden, hearing right. a strange noise from over the fence. How do you explain While that it can cops? take various forms, the scouring hive is at its most lethal when it chooses to attack directly. Taking the form of a kind of carpet of worms, it flows across the ground quickly, climbing surfaces, wow. squeezing through narrow gaps, and finding creative solutions to stalk otherwise inaccessible targets. <laughs> like, it has hey, been known to swarm through magical. various circuitous routes like drain pipes and air vents while on the hunt. Dang. Once it has reached its prey, it envelops Poor them, lady. coating them in that acidic secretion that rapidly breaks down living tissue into a slurry for the worms to consume. Gosh. While it is unclear whether this is a genuine reaction or just another instance of parroting, this SCP seems to enjoy gloating at this stage, <laughs> laughing at and mocking its prey as it consumes it. How a colony of worms has reached this level of cognition is unknown. While tougher than your average garden worms, the scouring hive is not invincible. Susceptible okay. to incineration, freezing, and full body disintegration, SCP-906 <laughs> can be neutralized if the need should ever arise. Burn. When under existential threat, the colony will begin to undergo a period of rapid reproduction. As long as just a handful of worms survive, worms the colony is able to rebuild itself quickly. Yep. That is why SCP-906 is currently held in secure storage in a 3 by 3 meter fully airtight acid-resistant box. Thank it is God. kept it's at a constant pain. 5 degrees Celsius. At this cool temperature, SCP-906 operates at a much reduced capacity, yeah. consuming less food, reproducing at a reduced rate, and moving slowly. Should that temperature ever increase, all SCP personnel are to evacuate immediately and ready themselves <laughs> to terminate any worms they see with flamethrowers and liquid nitrogen. While this super Dang. colony is currently contained, it is unknown whether more instances of these worms exist outside of the foundation walls, right. slowly burrowing that's, their that's way crazy. through the dirt towards one another until they have enough to start to feed. If you want to support our important mission Dang, while bro. also getting in, that's a crazy entity. Like when you think about it, worms are pretty durable, man. Like they can regenerate on their own, they can travel in the earth, they can move pretty fast for what they are. And uh, and and they already pretty resilient, you know what I mean? That's 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 scary to think about it. And uh, it's got to be torture to be digested like that. Into they call it a slurry. Just that's what them. You think that's that slimy stuff in the soil where the uh, the brown stuff was in the corner? Those kids, gah. <laughs> Four things, man. This was awesome, guys. Make sure to subscribe to Dr. Bob. And if you like this kind of video, make sure to check this one out as well.